Gamers, what's good? So we have the brand new dual triangle event starting very soon. Actually, for you when you're watching this video, this event probably has already started. And this is a really interesting event. I really like this idea. So basically, you have uh, fusion decks, synchro decks, and XCs decks. There's no link decks. And you can't like intermingle them. So fusion decks do not get to play synchros or XCs. And the same applies for every other variant, right? I think that's a really interesting idea. Uh, they also all get their own ban lists. Like for example, um, Synchro has Wakaushi at one, you know, for the super heavy Samurais. But then if you build an XCs deck, you can actually run three Wakaushi. So you can potentially use it as like a, you know, a little rank four engine. As always, when we have these new events, we like to do a what should you play, where we're just showcasing different decks from people in my Discord. Discord, and today is going to be exactly the same for that. Now, I just want to mention right now, sorry if I look a little bit dead or tired. I got really, really sick last night. I'm feeling better now, but yeah, so I'm just I'm just still kind of recovering from being sick. And if you're wondering what I'm going to be playing, I'm actually going to be playing a deck. Uh, this is basically from Maz here. This is, uh, yeah, it's it's Kashtira Boxers, but I'm going to be running the uh, Wakaushi as just an easy way to get to King Dempsey. But yeah, you know, you guys can see this if you just catch me on stream when we're doing the event. With that being said, though, before we go showcase everyone's decks, we have to go look at the staples for this event. All right. So as you can see here, we pretty much have every staple legal. The only hand trap that's not legal that I can think of is pretty much Max C, which is really cool. It's nice to see an event without Max C. I think Max C is probably going to get banned soon in Master Rule, actually. I'm probably going to make a video about that soon, but you guys probably know what I'm talking about. There's a certain card releasing uh, in OCG that seems to be a sign of them preparing to finally hit Maxi. So very happy to say that. But yeah, so for now, you know, we have events and sometimes they remove Maxi and it makes the event a lot better. And you might be noticing here, I did put in the uh, Kurikara as well as the Herald of the Abyss. So I just want to point out for this event, we're not going to have any Kaijus. All the Kaijus are banned. Lava Golem is banned. So because of that, I think X Pearly Noir is probably going to be one of the toughest to out cards in the entire event. And for that reason, I really recommend running either Herald of the Abyss or Kurikara Divine Carnet because I really wouldn't be surprised if a pearly player just turbo out the Noir. You know, you can't out it. Uh, plus, we don't even have Goddess, so you can't even try to get into Link Place to out it. You'll just be stuck staring at a Noir. So I think Kurikara Divine Carnet is one way to out it. And other than that, you could run Thrust and Herald of the Abyss. I think that's a really good way to get to it. And yeah, um, Super Poly's at three. So Fusion Decks, pretty massive advantage there. Most of the people that submitted Fusion Decks for this video actually were not running three Super Poly. Um, I think you should. I'll just say that right now. If it, I think you should be running three Super Poly. It's just crazy. But uh, yeah, anyway, we have a lot of decks to get through. We're going to start with what I think is going to be the best deck of the event. All right. So what we have here from Jadistic is a Pearly list. And I mean, you can't really go wrong with Pearly this event. I kind of just talked about this. But yeah, the X Pearly Noir being an unoutable towers is extremely broken when one, we don't have a link. So we can't make Goddess to out it. And we don't have Kaijus or Golem. So really your best bet to out a Noir will be just straight up you have to get to a Herald of the Abyss or you have to be able to trigger a Kurikara Divine Carnet. So yeah, I, I, honestly, that's my whole reasoning. I don't really have much more reasoning for saying that Pearly is going to be the best deck in the event. And I guess there's also the fact that it's an event, right? So you don't lose anything for scooping. So what they're going to do probably is if you lose a coin flip with Pearly, you're just going to scoop. And then if you go first, you just turbo out the X Pearly Noir. And that's just going to be game right there. So yeah, not much else to say about Pearly, but let's go check out a replay. All right, so let's see these Pearlies in action here. Um, I know not everyone loves Pearly. I, I'm kind of mixed on Pearly. Like, part of me likes it, and then part of me also thinks, like, turboing out, uh, you know, just the towers is kind of cringe. But whatever, shout out Jadistic. So, okay, starting off with the field spell and my friend. This is a pretty ridiculous hand, honestly. Uh, you even have the Gamma if they decided to Ash the my friend. So we get another Sleepy. We're going to go for Sleepy Memory. And they're going to chain Maxi. Ooh, ooh. Uh, we can just go Gamma here. Yeah, yeah, that's easy money. Don't have a Synchro in our deck to make with Gamma. So, you know, that sucks. But still, just getting to out Maxi. So, yeah, this guy probably was testing in Ladder for the deck. Obviously, this won't happen in the event because Maxi will be banned. But either way, so we go for Pearl Lily here. Search a Pearly. Then we go for Pearl Lily. Target the Pearly Sleepy Memory and Grave and make an E Pearly Noir. At this point, we can equip it with the uh, the uh, Sleepy Memory in the Grave. Normal Summon our Pearly. 
And we do get a flash spell. Very cool. Oh, we grabbed the my friend. Okay, fair enough. Either way, we're going to go for Pearly Sleepy Memory here. And we're going to chain the E Pearly Noir so we can equip the Sleepy Memory to the Noir and set a Pearly Trap from the deck. So this basically guarantees you access to your um, towers. And also we get to summon a Pearly from the deck here. So using these two, we're going to go into a, <laughs> a Kiki Nagashi Fucho. Oh my god, you're really passing on Fucho, bro? Really passing on Fucho, bro? <laughs> That's pretty funny, but all right, bro. Anyway... Get to equip another um, another material to our e pearly noir and we have all three sleepy memory here so we'll get three draws at the start of the turn which is just disgusting three draws followed by making our towers and it has exactly five materials so it is unaffected and we win <laughs> it's uh yeah that's uh, that's about that's about what's gonna happen in the event i think you're gonna be losing to uh, x pearly noir a lot in the event but anyway let's move on to the next deck here all right so next up here from ckw81 we have resonators and i think with like bar none i think resonators are gonna be the best way to play synchro in this event uh they really don't lose anything other than max c um they really have access to every single card that they would run regardless now this is a pretty strange 50 card build but i'm not gonna start telling you how to build this deck because I don't really play this deck, so I'm not going to say anything about that. Uh, I will say, however, if people are thinking that Sword Soul will be the best Synchro deck, I want to point out that Sword Soul, without the Tenyi links, is significantly worse. The Tenyi engine is just not very good in Sword Soul without those links. We will be showing Sword Soul in this video, don't get me wrong, it's totally playable. It's just significantly worse. Uh, so I do think the best way to play Synchros in this event is this deck right here. And yeah, I mean, all in all, even though it's 50 cards, I'm looking at this build and I still think it looks really solid and really consistent. So we're just going to go check out a replay. All right. So let's see our Resonators slash RDA in action here. Um, I, I'm not like I'm not I don't play this deck, but I am familiar with a good amount of the cards. So I should be able to commentate this decently. So uh, we're starting off here with our Crimson Gaia. We're going to go Crimson Gaia to search a Fiend here. We're going to grab the Soul Resonator. Go Soul Resonator Effect to search the Bone Arch Fiend, at which point we can go Bone Arch Fiend, discard the Synchron Resonator to summon Bone Arch Fiend. Bone Arch Fiend target this, the Soul Resonator, send Crimson to the grave to make it a level 2, after which we can make ourselves our broken Royal Red Rising Dragon, bring back the Crimson Resonator from the grave. Crimson Resonator will summon two Resonators from the deck, at which point we can go into our Scarred Dragon Arch Fiend, and we can go for Vision Resonator, search Red Zone. So after that, we can use these two. Make ourselves a Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, which is a really strong Omni Negate. And we get to trigger our Synchron Resonator as well as our Scarred Dragon Archfiend. So Synchron Resonator will add to our hand our Vision Resonator. And the Scarred will summon a uh, yeah a Red Dragon Archfiend from the extra deck. Vision Resonator. Oh, okay. We're going to go for this first. So we're going to go Bestial Lubellion here. Search the Bestial Magnemut. After which we're going to... Oh, yeah. We're going to send the, the Red Dragon Archfiend to the grave to make a Lubellion. I like that. Get our branded regained. Use these two. Make ourselves a Bestial Dispater. Okay, really cool. Then Magnemut can banish this card to summon itself. Then we can go for Magnemut Search. Special out the Vision from hand. And make ourselves a Void Ogre Dragon. Oh, okay. That's really cool. And we'll, our hand will be empty here because we have a bunch of back row. Bring back this card. Oh, get a Bestial Baldrick. So I guess we'll want to summon this Baldrick as soon as possible here. They're going to go Super Poly. Ooh. Okay. So Super Poly, make a Garura. See, this is probably going to be happening in the event quite a bit when you're playing this deck. Uh, but we get to bring back this Spader thanks to Regained. And we can trigger the Baldrake, banishing the uh, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. And I mean, I mean, honestly, this is still really good. So they're, they're going to summon out their Cartesia and go straight into a Chaos Angel. Really interesting. So Chaos Angel uh, target the Dispater, and we can go for a Garura draw. But we will be sending to our grave the Scarred in order to... Uh to, I think, banish the Chaos Angel. And we're going to Imperm the Chaos Angel afterwards to make sure that it's affected. That's really, really cool. I mean, that's really good. So after that, Garura gets a draw. Chaos Angel is negated. We don't have to worry about that. After which, we can go for Scarred Effect in the Grave, summon out a Red Dragon Archfiend. Dude, this is actually really, really solid. And we got the game there. Yeah. We didn't even have to use all of our interruption. I mean, yeah. 
again i think this deck is actually like really really solid for the event definitely in my opinion the best synchro deck for the event but moving on next up here we have snowy orcas tier limits thank you for submitting this deck i do want to point out because i forgot to mention this but uh you guys can just look at the left of the screen if you're ever curious about a certain card name that you don't know or something like that and they're all going to scroll one by one at the left of the screen whenever we're looking at a deck so anyway tier limits i think is probably going to be one of the best ways to play fusion this event i will say however I don't get this build. So shout out Snowy Orca, and I'm not gonna talk smack or anything, but like, I don't get why you're just running two Super Poly, maybe you only have two. I don't get why you're running three Invocation, three Alistair, and the Field Spell. I feel like this is too many Invocation cards. I'd probably run at least like two Invocation, and like, yeah, at least two Invocation. Uh, you're also running three Meta Noise. Like, I, I feel like you didn't need to play 50 cards for this build, but I understand that Tier Limits Shadal wants to mill itself a lot, so I don't want to get too judgy here. I don't really play this deck anyway, so, you know, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this build is actually perfect, uh, ex except for the Super Poly. I'm pretty confident that Super Poly, you should be running three and you should be running Mud Dragon, but whatever. Either way, I think that you can't really go wrong with this deck. Oh, and you should be running Snow. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm going to stop. Let's go check out the replay. All right, so let's see this deck in action. You already know with decks like this, it's really just high rolly, just mill a million cards and just get way too much advantage from it. So we're going to start off with the Supreme Seamare dumping the Havness. Havness effect fusion with the Seamare to make it Kit Kalos. And we're just going to fast forward here a little bit because uh, it's going to take a while. So Kit Kalos sent the Tierlemans Cash Tira, mill a couple of cards. Kit Kalos summon the Tierlemans Cash from the grave and we get to mill a bunch of cards. You should have chain blocked the kit, but whatever. Then we get to trigger our uh, Shadal, wait, <laughs> sorry, our Shadal Wendy as well as our uh, Meta Noise add back the Havness. So Wendy's going to set Shadal Beast, at which point we can go for Invocation, banish the Alistair and the Veiler that we milled to make a Mikaba. Going to set our Sulik. We're going to go for Invocation to add back to our hand the Alistair, shuffle back the Invocation. And yeah, I mean, honestly, this isn't really, this isn't really all that crazy. This is kind of, uh, this is kind of just okay, but whatever. Um, so they're going to go for a Droplet here. And uh, wait, you win this? Okay. They're going to go for Heavenly Dragon Circle, Summon Protos. We're going to go Magnemut on their Vishda. Magnemut Effect. Then we can go Solik, Negate the Taya. At which point we can mill with uh, our Telemans Cash Tira. Uh, we get to use the Alistair Effect to boost our Makaba. And then they're going to go for their Evenly. We're going to keep the Solik on the field. Pretty interesting. Uh, it's our turn here. We're going to get to Normal Alistair. You'll love to see it. Add Invocation. Invocation, use two monsters from hand to make a Winda. That's disgusting. Then we get to trigger Havness and Squamata and Grave. So we're going to get to dump and shuffle back and summon out the Grapha. Oh my goodness. And we get to draw because of the Shadal Beast. Yeah, this is pretty nasty. I can't believe this game is still going. Oh my god, dude. This is silly. This is super silly. How do we have a Snowy Orca and Orca of Snow? What What is going on here? Anyway, uh, Grafa negate the Moye, and then they're just going to crash. All right, fair enough. Uh, decent replay, decent replay. I feel like if your build was a little bit better, you probably would have exploded a bit more on turn one. I'm sure this deck is crazy, but I am questioning your ratios, but that's no big deal. Let's move on. Next up here from Mazinger, it is Teller Knights. And honestly, this Teller Knight build looks really solid to me. Um, still making use of that Wakaushi engine. I think it's just a crazy way to make a rank four without using your normal summon. So I definitely agree uh, about running three bike and three Wakaushi and just, you know, going crazy with that. Other than that, you know, it's basically just Teller Knights. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this deck because every time I try talking about this deck, I just sound stupid and I don't know how this deck works and I'm really bad at it. And yeah, so let's just go watch the replay. All right, so I'm going to try to commentate Teller Knight properly here. Let's see if I can do it. We have the Waka in hand and the Crow. That's nice. So we're going to start off with Wakaushi. And we're going to go Wakaushi, scale up the Benkei. Benkei, search the Soul Gaia armor. Then we can go Soul Gaia armor and special summon it to make ourselves... Oh, start off with the Dweller. Interesting. Then we're going to go for Ulkahai and uh, summon out the Liran. Get to dump a uh, Altaran and search a Skybridge. At which point we can make ourselves... A Teller Knight, Constellar Caduceus, add back the Altaran to our hand, banish the Deneb to copy its effect and add a Vega to our hand, at which point we can go for Constellar Teller Knight, summon out the Vega and summon out the Altaran using the Vega effect, make ourselves a Constellar Ptolemy, 
and we can target our Tolemi with our continuous spell to make a Delteros, at which point we can go for the Delteros effect, detach our material targeting itself to pop it, at which point the Delteros will trigger to summon a Altair from the deck targeting Delteros, bringing it back to the field, and we can link off, oh, okay, the no material Delteros into an Xyz Armor Fortress, detach one, get a full armored Xyz, that's really, really good. And then we can make our full armored Dark Knight Lancer. Using these two, we can go into Tolmaeus. That's really crazy, actually. Then Tolmaeus can attach one Stellar Knight from our extra deck to it as material. We can detach three and make ourselves a Cyber Dragon Nova. And okay, so I think the idea here is that on opponent's turn, we can go for full armored Xyz to just throw an infinity on the Nova. And then we also have the graveyard effect of full armored Xyz. That's really, really crazy. Okay, that's really good. Really, really good. So in draw phase, we're going to go Dweller. And we're going to activate Full Armored Xyz. Yeah, I was right. Okay. And then you make Infinity. So you get an Omni Negate. And you also have the Suck effect from Full Armored Dark Knight Lancer. That's really cool. So they're going to normal Mirror Sword Knight. And then go Polymerization to make Guardian Chimera. Okay. Interesting. Then Guardian Chimera effect. They're gonna We're going to negate with the Cyber Dragon Infinity. This is really interesting. Okay. So negate and destroy. At which point we can go Branded Fusion dump two make ourselves a rimbrum oh my god we're, we're on struggle mode here then we can go for Satellar knight sky bridge yo i'm not gonna lie this xyz armor stuff seems really crazy in uh, teller knights so we can go for sirius shuffling back five and i think it gets you one draw yeah and we also get the altair effect in the grave altarin i mean and altarin will come back from the grave then we get to shuffle a bunch and draw a card very nice altarin is gonna pop the uh, rimbrum then we can go full armored xyz to uh, just <laughs> make our Cyber Dragon Infinity way bigger because uh, we didn't need the suck effect from the Lancer. Um, yo, I mean, it's a Maz replay, right? Maz always coming in with the sauce. This shit was super cool. I'm not even going to lie. Like, that's a really sick build. Um, yeah, double your replay. Uh, moving on. All right, and here from Kenny Pickering, we have Bestial Sword Soul. And if I was going to include a Sword Soul list, I wanted to include this one. Without the Tenyi links, I really don't think it's worth it to play the Tenyis at all. So I do think it makes sense to run these Bestials. I mean, there is the off chance if you can get like Ecclesia plus a Bestial. You can make a uh, Chaos Angel with both effects, and having all your Synchro Monsters be unaffected by monster effects can be crazy. There's also some interesting text in here, like he's running the Gold Sarcophagus, and Gold Sarcophagus could uh, banish the Blackout, and then Blackout can summon a monster. Also running the Pot of Desires, you know, so we're really trying to offset the lack of consistency here. So if you do have Sword Soul, I, I mean, you can definitely play it, and I think a build like this would make a lot of sense. Also, I noticed you're running... 3 Ash, 3 Valor, 3 Imperm, and 3 Nibiru. And I definitely think, you know, uh, people think Nibiru is not that great. But when you pair Nibiru with any other hand trap, Nibiru becomes a lot better. So I definitely think these ratios make a lot of sense before anyone starts looking at it all weird, you know. It makes a lot of sense. But anyway, let's go check out that replay. All right, let's see these Sword Souls in action. I always love Sword Souls, so, you know. Oh my god, this hand is crazy. Okay, yeah, su super good. So we're going to start with the Emergence here, grab the Sword Soul of Taya, and we're going to get to go long one, discard the Taya. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And then we get to make our token, go straight into a Baron de Fleur super early. You'll love to see it, at which point we can burn a little bit. We can activate Sacred Summit, and uh, Kenny's actually running three Sacred Summit, which again, without the Tenyis, I think that makes a lot of sense. So bring back the Taya, Banish from Grave. They're going to negate the, uh, the Sword Soul of Taya, and we're actually going to negate the Veiler. Damn. We're already committing to our Omni Negate here. By the way, opponent playing Goaty. I didn't get a Goaty list, but I think Goaty is a good pick for this event as well. Um, we get our token. We get to go Magnamut. And the Beast Chills here are pretty useful, right? Because we can actually use... Um, oh, well, we're not doing it. But we could use the Magnamut to make another uh, level 10 Synchro there. Uh, so we're going to go for Shishao Effect and Taya Effect here. And Taya is going to dump a Moye. At which point we can go Shishao, banish the Blackout to get a token. Really cool. And then use these two and make ourselves a another Baron de Fleur. Okay. All right. Just given no shits whatsoever. That's really crazy. Okay. So we have an Omni Negate. We have, you know, the typical Baron and Chi Shao pass. Seeing two Baron on the field is actually cursed. We get our uh, Magnumut here. And we have Druid Swarm in hand, which is not bad. Our opponent is going to go A grind here. And we're going to negate the A grind with Baron, which makes a lot of sense. A grind is a crazy card, it's a free synchro. At this point, they're going to go for Leaf Fish. We're going to negate the Leaf Fish with the Shishao. And yeah, they are, they're out of place. Very sad. Very sad. 
Uh, they do have the Hoppier Squadron in hand, though, so they might be able to do something here. So in standby, we're going to summon out the Moye. Moye reveal the long one. We get a token. Make ourselves a Baxia. Oof. Baxia. Okay, and then they can chain the Hoppier to Baxia. That's really, really good. And make a Serpent of the Goatee, at which point uh, we're just going to negate it. And uh, yeah, I think we're cleaning it up from here. But still, that was pretty cool. Uh, pop the backside to bring back the uh, Taya. Banish from Grave to get a token. Use these two. Make our own A grind. Oh my god. And then we get to summon our Jewish Worm and just go in and go crazy. Summon the Baldrake too. I think we have lethal here. Yep, that's definitely lethal. Oh my goodness. Really good replay. Um, yeah, especially since everyone's going to be playing three Valor. I think running Beast Chills in Sword Soul makes a ton of sense. Because uh, everyone's just going to be replacing their Maxi with copies of Valor since Maxi is banned. But uh, yeah, really, really good replay. Uh, let's move on. All right. And next up here from Pit to Solves, we have an oh my god, I love this deck. It is Runic Chimera. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I might play a little bit of the event with that Boxer Cash List. And then I'll probably switch to Runic Chimera to just give some more testing to this deck before I try to take it to ladder. You could even run Super Poly if you wanted to. I'm not exactly sure what you would remove, but you could run Super Poly in this and, uh, you know, just clean up the extra deck a tiny little bit. Although I, I think this is a perfectly respectable build for it. I'm not too sure about the Shufflers, but I guess Tier Limit will probably be quite popular this event. So maybe that's why. I'm not exactly sure about the Shufflers. But either way, I do think this is a really solid deck. It's a ton of fun too. Yeah, let's just go check out the replay. All right, dude. I can't wait to see this deck in action. Dude, the advantage that Runic Chimera generates is absolutely ridiculous. Um, this is a pretty good hand. If you can discard Edgem Chain, you're feeling pretty good. So we're going to go for Runic Smiting Storm, summoning out the Hugin, at which point we can go for Hugin Effect, discarding the Edgem Chain. They're going to Ash the Hugin, but we're going to call by the Ash here. Oh my god, our opponent has nothing but hand traps. That's disgusting. We're going to grab a Runic Fountain. Then we're going to go for Edgem Chain, grab the Fright for Patchwork. At this point, we can go for Fright for Patchwork, add ourselves a Polymerization as well as Edgem Chain. And we can go for Runic Fountain, activate the Slumber on our Hugin. And we get to banish a couple of cards and get a couple of draws. You'll love to see it. Very good. Here we can go for Coatl. And we're going to grab ourselves a Mirror Sword Knight. Normal to Mirror Sword Knight. We can activate its quick effect to summon out the Burfamet. They're going to negate the Burfamet, but we can actually chain the Chimera Fusion to dodge the uh, Valor here, which is crazy. Um, so we're going to grab ourselves with the Burfamet a Gazelle as well as a Chimera Fusion. We can go Burfamet effect in the grave to summon out the Mirror Sword Knight. Use Polymerization to make ourselves a Chimera King... Uh, Okay, change the name, but you guys know. You guys know. Anyway, we get Nibiru here, which is totally fine, but we do get to loop a card out of our opponent's hand in the end phase here. And we get to add back the Chimera Fusion to our hand from the grave, make ourselves a Guardian Chimera. We get to pop the Nibiru and draw two cards, which is really crazy. At which point, we're going to set our two Runic spells. No, one Runic spell and the Chimera Fusion. And in the end phase, we can, uh, on our opponent's turn, I mean, we can banish the Chimera, the King of uh, whatever, <laughs> to summon out the Burfamet. Burfamet will search two. So I'm going to slow down here a little bit. Uh, our opponent is going to go for Coatl, and they're going to add to their hand a Mirror Sword Knight. Very respectable. Go for Mirror Sword Knight, sent to the grave to Special Summon Burfamet. Uh, we're just going to fast forward a little bit here. Oh, okay, so we're just going to negate the Burfamet. That makes a ton of sense, and I think that's going to win the game, honestly. Just that negate alone, I, I don't think we can lose from here. So we negate that. We get a couple of draws. Well, just one draw, but that's still pretty good. Grab a Dispelling. We can go Chimera Fusion. Uh, use our fusion monster as well as two more monsters to make another chimera and we'll get to draw two yet again as well as pop a monster which is crazy so pop the burfamet we get to trigger the gazelle and grave as well and that's what i'm saying dude the advantage this deck generates is just stupid so gazelle will get a search here we got our two draws we got to pop a card and then in end phase we're going to go runic tip and add ourselves a runic slumber which is really nuts at this point oh we're also going to go slumber right now okay so we're just trying to like stock up the graveyard with runic cards so that when our turn starts we can just go crazy so we're going to go chimera fusion here using mirror sword knight as well as our uh, burfamet and make ourselves a burfamet the mythical king of phantom beasts and then we can bring back our mirror sword knight from the grave using burfamet and add back to our hand the chimera fusion like this deck the resource loop in this deck is just stupid summon burfamet get to search uh <laughs> you know our, our gazelle here go chimera fusion again Summon Magnum the Reliever. Uh, I think I think Pit is uh, is uh, BMing a little bit here, but uh, to be fair, I mean we can't attack this turn, so we're probably just trying to set up a way that we're safe on the next turn, so that we can attack on the turn after. So we're gonna use our Freezing Curses here to summon a Slepnir, and we're gonna get to do a couple of draws. Very nice. 
and then we're going to go for Quattl, add to our hand of the Mirror Sword Knight, and pass turn. And uh, I guess our hope is that we don't have to use Runic cards next turn, and we can just kind of try to go for a game. Okay, well, that'll clean it up pretty easy. You know, you were just trying to build control since you couldn't attack. That totally makes sense. But yeah, really good replay, really awesome deck. You guys saw all the advantage that was being generated there. Uh, the Runic Engine plus Chimera Engine, they work really well together. I really, really like this build. All right, and finally, our last deck on the Xyz side will be the Dinos from Arrowman Mike. And uh, as you can see, Bro is running the Math Mech package. So it's Math Mech, Snake Eyes, Dino. I genuinely think this is like a really good build. I think this is gonna do really well in the event. I just can't wait to show you the replay. Like this is a totally ceiling focused deck, but the combo is actually insane. So let's just go check out the replay. Now, Arrowman Mike was telling me he has not played rank in a minute, so he's in bronze to get this replay. So he's apologizing for bullying here. Our opponent has one card in extra deck, probably playing against a complete non-deck, you know, but we just wanna show the combo. So it is what it is either way. So this is the OV miscline. So we're gonna go OV, Search Misk. Actually, we searched UCT, my bad. We go Misk, summon the Archosaur, pop the baby. We're going to fast forward here. Grab the double evolution pill, baby. Summon a Petite, pop the Petite with OV, bring back the baby from the grave. Petite is going to summon from the deck a Evil Sor Lyos, which is going to set the Evo Diversity, uh, I mean, Evo Singularity trap from the deck. Here we can make Alan Bershon detach two to search a Circular. At this point, we can go Circular, dump the Nabla, and then we can trigger our Alan Bershon, tribute our Archosaur to summon the Nabla, at which point Circular can search the Super Factorial. We go Nabla tribute itself to summon Diameter, use these two to make ourselves a Infernal Flame Banshee. Banshee is going to search the poplar poplar is going to summon itself and then we can use these two to make a utopic future then we go into utopic draco future activate the original sinful spoils summon out the mega corella mega corella uh, tribute itself discard a card to summon the meteors meteors pop the baby summon the opal we can make ourselves a lars and we can summon from the deck a misc then we can activate double evolution pill summon the pancratops and we go to end phase well, i don't know why we didn't summon uct there but okay either way uh, we're going to go for our Lars, negate the double summon. Oh my god, this deck is crazy. Uh, and then we're going to go Pank, pop a back row. They're going to go for Bad Luck Blast. We're going to go for a Super Factorial. Bring back our three Math Mechs from the grave, dude. This is so silly. And make ourselves a Laplacian. And then we're just going to get to send three cards to the grave here. And we're going to go Evo, <laughs> Evo Singularity. Make a Lagia. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. This is actually disgusting. Actually disgusting, dude. Look at this stuff. This is silly. Arrowman Mike cooked, man. He really cooked. Um, and here, yeah, we're just gonna go to battle and swing. All right. Yeah, that was a pretty nasty, that was a pretty nasty replay, dude. I would give that like a five out of five if I was doing rate my replay. That's disgusting, but I do feel bad for your opponent and that was bullying and it's not okay and I, I don't condone bullying, but let's move on. All right, next up here from Mazinger. It would not be a what should you play without multiple decks from Mazinger. So his second deck for this video is TG. And I gotta say, I think TG, while I don't think it's gonna be quite as good as uh, Resonators, I do think this is probably better than Sword Soul, to be honest. Uh, this deck is actually super crazy. It just does a bunch of insane f uh, synchro summoning on the opponent's turn. You can even Calamity lock your opponent in this event with the TGs, which is pretty disgusting. And while we do have a lot of hits to the Snake Eyes cards, we're still looking at like one Bonfire, one Wanted, one Diabelle Star, and you know, three Snake Eye Ash. So getting into our popular combo to do the crazy stuff with the TGs is very doable. Now, obviously we don't have elf so that does make the deck a bit worse but i still think this is going to be a really really solid pick so let's go check out that replay all right let's see the tgs in action i am pretty familiar with these cards i should be able to commentate this a little bit well not amazing but should be okay so oh we're going second actually okay that's interesting so uh, our opponent is playing runic playing runic stun playing runic stun runic stun you love to see it you love to see it so what are we going to do are we going to go for evenly? Nice. Love to see it. So evenly, they're going to go for a runic... Oh my god. Okay, bro. Whatever. And we're going to go for a wanted. And we're going to, you know, discard, summon Diabelle, get our original. Original, summon out the snake Ash. Then we can go for Ash, grab Ash. Interesting. Normal, the Salamander. And we can get our Grub out of the deck. Then we make ourselves a TG Mighty Striker. Search the close. We can go TG all clear. All clear, pop the striker. Search the screw serpent. Then we can trigger striker. Dump the TG limiter removal. Then screw serpent can summon from the grave our salamander. And we can go and go into TG Dragonar, which summons like a million times out of the graveyard here. 
So we're going to use these two to make ourselves a Hyper Librarian, trigger the Grub in the Grave to get ourselves a token. Then we can activate our Salamander, bring back the Screw Serpent from the Grave to make ourselves a Star Guardian, get a draw from Hyper Librarian, and Star Guardian is going to add to our hand our TG Screw Serpent. Then we get to draw into Nibiru. That's really nice. We're going to make ourselves another Dragonar. Then we're going to go for Hyper Librarian, draw again, get a Valor, make a Blade Blaster. Dude, these Librarian draws are crazy. All right, get a draw off of Wanted. We draw into Limiter Removal, which is crazy. So we get to search two from the deck here. Summon out the TG Booster Raptor and special out the Zombie. Then we make ourselves another TG Striker. Draw again. Go into Glaive Blaster. Set a card. And uh, okay, yeah, we can't attack because of the Messenger of Peace here. And they lose 100 life points. Kaiser Coliseum. We're going to go for Mighty Striker Effect. They're going to go for Droplet. We're going to Ash the Droplet. Oh, interesting. And we can make ourselves a Crimson Dragon. Then Crimson Dragon can target the Glaive Blaster, and we can make ourselves a Blazer Dragon, negating the Dispelling. Oh my goodness, this is really good. Then Glaive Blaster can bring back the Blazer Dragon. Oh my god. Now, we still can't attack because of Messenger of Peace, but, you know, I'm sure we'll figure something out. So, Limiter Removal, uh, send back the Dragon Art to the extra deck. Then we can go for All Clear, pop the Drillfish, summon out the Screw Serpent, get back our Salamander from the Grave, and make ourselves a Over Dragon R yet again. Summon a bunch from the Grave here. There's a Librarian. And then we're going to go for the Star Guardian, add back Screw Serpent, and go to End Phase. Yeah, we cannot swing. Cannot swing. Um, that's an annoying card. So, Dragon R. Go into, oh, Satellite Warrior will clean it up here. Satellite Warrior can pop three cards, and yeah. Oh my goodness. And they had even said the Solemn. You needed to pop that turn. All right, that was clutch. Uh, bring back the Mighty Striker. Make ourselves another Crimson Dragon. Oh my god, dude. Crimson Dragon make the Calamity. Oh my god, we're just BMing. We're just BMing, but honestly, you know... Against a stun guy like this, this this is very, very nice to see. I love to see it. We have like 1 billion cards in hand without even using Max C. It looks like we our opponent took a Max C challenge here. This is actually ridiculous. Yeah, okay. Another amazing Moz replay, you know. 5 out of 5 replay. Uh, the deck looks crazy. I'll admit it. I think this deck looks insane. So yeah, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe this is the craziest Synchro deck. Anyway, moving on. And our final deck list for today from Pokemon Trainer is Branded. And his logic was to run just a 60 pile all gas branded deck. Uh, branded took quite a few hits for this event. You only have one Albaz. Uh, you only have one uh, Serenir. One, I don't know if Serenia was already limited. Anyway, uh, you just have a lot of limitations. And most importantly is they banned the uh, Branded Retribution, which is the trap card that lets you add Branded Fusion from your grave to your hand. So the Cartesia line is a lot less good in this build. So, you know, he decided, screw hand traps. I'm just going to run all gas and just going to hope that my opponent doesn't have enough interruption to stop all the things I'm trying to do. I think it's a respectable approach, you know. They did take quite a few hits, which I do think makes Branded not as broken as I first expected for this event, but I still think it's going to be a really solid pick. We can go check out the replay right now. All right, so here we go. Branded time. Branded time. We're going second against Cash Tira. Oh, boy. Oh, it might be Tier Limits, actually. Yeah, they're going Foolish Burial Goods. Send the Trivikarma to the grave. Yeah, so that's ca that's uh, Tier Limits for sure. Grab the Scream, activate Scream, activate the Field Spell. Of course you had the Field Spell in Foolish Burial Goods. Of course you did. They go Normal Rhino Heart, trigger the Scream, dump a couple of cards here, trigger the Havness in the grave, shuffle back two, make a Kit Kalos, at which point Kit Kalos is going to add to hand the Tier Limits Grief. We're going to go Grief, summon Sharon, and send to the grave a Kit Kalos. Okay, mill five, then we can go for Tier Limits uh, Cash Tira. Banish the card, summon Tier Limits Cash Tira, get to mill a couple, and lucky you got your Sharon. So we're going to get to go into a Rule Kalos. Now we're going to go our... Uh, oh, we're going to make a Time Thief Redoer. So we have Rule Kalos, Fenrir, and Time Thief Redoer. Very solid stuff. But now it's our turn. Oh, God, they got a spell. That sucks. Okay, well, Lubelion time, grab a Magnumut. Then we're going to go for Triple Tactics Thrust and grab a Lore of Darkness. Activate a Lore, draw two, banish Mercorier. Mercorier is going to trigger, searching our uh, Albion Shrouded Dragon. Albion, dump the Branded Sword. Then Branded Sword Engrave can banish itself to target the Mercorier. And we're going to chain our Branded in High Spirit. So we're going to get to uh, search a Quem and add to our hand the Mercorier here. Very good. We get to go Edge of Chain, grab the Fright for Patchwork, activate Patchwork, grab a Polymerization. And you guys can kind of see this whole like gas-oriented approach here. There's just so many things that we can do at this point. So we summon the Quiritus 
And we're going to go for Branded Lost. Search a card. We can go for Kit. They're going to go for Scream. We're going to go for Branded in Red. They're going to go for Tier Limits Crime, negating the Branded in Red. Uh, but we have Branded Lost, so they actually can't negate the activation of Branded in Red. They wasted it. That's very, very sad. And then we get to grab Branded Fusion, Branded in White. Now, they do have a Rule Kalos, which we have to deal with here. We're going to go... Oh, my God. This... Oh, my... Oh, my God. Okay, so they're going to negate the uh, Magnemut. Uh, so we're going to be able to go Branded Fusion. We lower all their attack points. Uh, <laughs> dude, that was crazy. That, that chain link was crazy. I actually lost track of what was going on. Anyway, Sharon, summon the Kit Kalos. And then we get to draw two off of the Chimera. Uh, they're going to go for Kit Effect. And they get to pop a card with their Field Spell here. And then they go for Rule Kalos, bring it back from the Grave. But they already used Rule Kalos Effect. So that doesn't really matter very much. And they also already used their Fenrir Removal Effect. At this point, they do get another mill. They have snow in the grave, which could come up, and they get a meta noise as well to add back the uh, Rhino Heart, which is kind of annoying. But uh, let's see here. Yeah, Rhino Heart is back. Grab the Solik. At this point, we go Branded Fusion, dump the Sharon as well as the Albaz. So we get to go Lubelion and Sharon Effect, and we discard the Branded Beast. And at this point, our opponent is just going to scoop. But uh, yeah, I mean, that worked, right? There was a lot of interruption on the field. You didn't have a single hand trap. You just kind of went like, okay, I'm just going to have so many activatables that my opponent won't be able to stop everything I'm trying to do. And at some point, I'm just going to start, you know, building advantage again. Uh, and it seems like it's actually a good strategy. But uh, yeah, that's about it for the deck showcase. Now, I do want to mention for people that want to play more on a budget. I know a lot of the decks we showcased in this video were very expensive. So I do want to say if you guys want more budget options, keep in mind there's really good structure decks in the shop for a lot of these options. You can also just play the loner decks, you know. But uh, otherwise, you know, if you want to buy structure decks, uh, there's the ninja structure deck, which is like you know, perfectly serviceable if you want to build a fusion deck with the ninjas. Um, if you want to play uh, an Xyz deck, you could definitely just get the Utopia deck and just go for like a Utopia double, just, you know, swing for game, going second every time, you know, like that's a totally respectable way to play. And if you want to play Synchro, you know, there's a Sword Soul structure deck. I'm sure you have it by now. That's a really good structure deck. Just play Sword Soul, throw in a couple of Beast Shields like we saw earlier, and that should be a good option. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this event. It looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. I really can't wait to stream it. Hopefully, I'll be feeling a lot better and we can just stream the event normally, you know, on Friday or something. Now, this is where the video would end, but Unnicknamed was pestering me to show you his Viacroid deck. Yes, yes, like Cyrus from GX, Roids. So we're going to go look before we finish the video at a replay from unnicknamed and i'm not going to show you the list for the unnicknamed deck because like it's literally roids do i recommend that you build roids not really but it is very based and i thought it would be fun to end the video with that so because this deck is really awesome i'm not gonna lie so here we go we're gonna set sangan activate mega roid city and we can pop the sangan on field to search a speed roid duplicate which is considered a roid card and then we can add to our hand the Ghost Mourner for next turn with the Sangan. Then we go Branded Fusion, send the Weisel as well as the uh, Fallen of Albaz to the grave to make ourselves a Lubelion Searing Dragon. Lubelion, discard the Tempest. We can shuffle back the Lubelion and the Albaz to make a Mirror Jade. At this point, we can go Fusion Destiny and just make a DPE. So what we're looking at here, we're looking at DPE, Mirror Jade, and Duplicate. And yeah, this is your uh, Viacroid board. This is Viacroids, okay? Uh, we're playing against based Gate Guardian. Gate Guardian, always based. And they're going to go for Wall Shadow. We're going to go for uh, the DPE Pop the Field spell, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Then we're going to go for Duplicate, which can banish a wind from the grave to bounce their back row, at which point we can go for the uh, Tempest effect to search another Tempest. And we top deck a Tempest, which is ridiculous. Get to summon out the Tempest using the Dasher in the grave, and we're going to bring back our DPE. Go Denier. Pop Denier to search Mixeroid. Then we can normal Mixeroid, tribute it to special summon a non-wind Roid monster from our deck. We summon Armor Roid, and we just swing, do a big damage, clean up the game, you know? Um, yeah, again, I'm, I'm not going to recommend building Roids, but I am going to commend Unnicknamed on this extremely based Roid list. And I think we can end the video there. Again, sorry if my energy was really low for this video. I, I was super, super sick this morning. So, you know, like I'm still recovering a little bit, but I still really wanted to get this What Should You Play out because I know it's a lot of people's favorite series on the channel. So I hope despite it, the video was still enjoyable and I really appreciate you guys for checking it out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm going to go edit this and try to get it out before the event starts or at least as soon as the event starts. So, uh, yeah. All right. Peace.